Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I'm back with another math tutorial for you guys. Today we are starting chapter seven and we are gonna look at lesson 7.1. And in lesson 7.1, we're going to be using our knowledge of fractions to find a part of a group. So we are gonna be taking a fraction and multiplying that by a whole number and that will help us identify a part of a group that we've been asked to identify. We're gonna use our denominator, our whole number, and our numerator to kind of help us figure out what would we do to figure out the portion of the group that we've been asked to look at. So I'm going to be setting up the whiteboard and doing a couple of problems with you guys and then I'll give you some closing thoughts. This particular lesson is all going to be model based because you're going to be asked to draw a model to represent your answer and eventually down the line we will use the algorithm or the actual mathematical steps that you would take to solve problems like these. But today's lesson is strictly a modeling lesson which means for your homework tonight you're going to need to follow these steps to complete the problem and then later on I'll be giving you some other strategies so that you can solve problems like these. So I'm going to flip the camera around, give you those couple of examples and then I will come back with some closing thoughts. Here we have our first problem, four fifths of 20. Notice that the multiplication sign is underlined because I want you guys to remember that anytime in these types of problems that you hear the word of, the word of represents your multiplication sign. So we're dealing with 20 stamps in this particular example from the book and we want to find well what is 4 fifths of 20? If I have 4 fifths of 20, how many stamps does that equal? The next thing I want us to think about is just how to set up this problem and what these different parts tell us to do. Your whole number part tells you the number of counters in this example, the number of stamps, the number of items that you're going to be dividing up into equal groups. So in this case, we're dealing with 20 stamps. The denominator in your fractional part tells you how many equal groups are you going to be creating. So in this example, I'm going to take my 20 stamps and I'm going to put those into five equal groups. Once I've put them into five equal groups, my numerator tells me how many of those equal groups will I be looking at in order to find my final answer. And in this case, I'm going to be looking at four out of those five groups. So the easiest way to get yourself started once you have that established is to look at your whole number part and realize that you're going to be representing 20. Again, in this example, we were talking about stamps, so I'm going to be drawing out 20 stamps, but they're going to be represented by little X's that I draw. And I need them to be in five equal groups. So I always like to establish my groups first. So first, I'm going to make my groups. Now that I've created my five groups, I'm going to continue to draw X's to represent my stamps until I've hit 20. So I already know that I have five here when I establish my five groups. So I'm going to continue going until I get to 20. So this was five, six, seven, eight, 9 and 10 and I'm doing it one at a time because I want to make sure that my groups are equal. This will be 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. This will be 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So I've drawn 20 X's to represent my 20 stamps and they are in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 groups and all my groups are equal. Now I'm looking at my numerator and my numerator tells me, well, out of those five equal groups, we're only concerned with four of them because we are looking for four fifths. So I'm going to box in four of those groups, which would be this here. And that tells me what four fifths of 20 is. So for me to find my final answer, I'm just going to count how many X's or in this case, how many stamps are boxed in. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there are 16 X's or 16 stamps boxed in that little area. That then tells me that four fifths of 20 is going to be 16. Now, as I was counting, hopefully you also recognize, well, since these are all equal groups, I could just say, well, there's one, two, three, four groups, and each group has one, two, three, four, and four times four is 16, and that would have been a more efficient way for me to figure out um, how many stamps or X's were in that box, but I did want to do it the first time, one at a time, so that you can see where I got that from. So that's really it. That's our first example. I'm going to do one more example. Okay, in this example, we are trying to find two-thirds of 12. 
Remember that the multiplication sign is representing the word of in this problem. Let's look at the different parts like we did in the first example. So I know that my whole number part tells me how many items am I dealing with. In this case, we're still dealing with the example of stamps. So I have 12 stamps and I'm trying to figure out what is two thirds of 12. If I had two thirds of 12 stamps, how many stamps would that be? The denominator tells me how many equal groups do I need to create? And my numerator tells me that once I've created those equal groups of 12, how many of those equal groups am I really concerned with at that particular time? So just like the last one, we're gonna establish our groups first. So I want three equal groups. So I'm going to create group one, that also represents stamp one. Group two, that also represents stamp two. And group three, that's gonna represent stamp three. Then I'm gonna keep going until I've created a total of 12 stamps. So I have three there. This is stamp four, stamp five, stamp six, stamp seven, stamp eight, stamp nine, stamp 10, stamp 11, and stamp 12. So I have 12 stamps put into three equal groups. There's 12 in total, all my groups are the same. My numerator tells me of those three equal groups, I'm really only concerned with two thirds or two out of the three of them. So I'm going to box two equal groups. Then to find my answer, I'm going to count how many stamps are in there. So since I know there's already equal groups, I'm just gonna count this group and I know that there's one, two, three, four stamps in that group. Since there's equal groups, I just know that I can do four times two groups and that's going to equal eight. That tells me that two thirds of 12 equals eight. So if someone has 12 stamps and two thirds of them are missing, that means eight stamps are missing. So those are your two examples. It's pretty straightforward, but sometimes you just need to see it a couple times to understand what to do. I'm gonna flip the camera around and give you some closing thoughts for this lesson. So those were your examples for today's lesson. And just some closing thoughts to remember to kind of help you out as you do these problems. Remember when you're taking a fraction and multiplying it by a whole number, the multiplication symbol actually stands for the word of. In some of our examples, we are trying to find, for example, I think four fifths of 20. So when you hear the word of, that was replaced by the multiplication sign. Secondly, the whole number part tells you how many items or how many counters or how many stamps, depending on the example, how many items are you looking at in total? That's what your whole number tells you. The denominator tells you how many equal groups are you creating? And then your numerator tells you once you've taken the number of items you're looking at, created those equal groups, how many of those equal groups are you really concerned about? Or how many counters in that particular number of groups will you be counting when you come up with your final answer? So, that's all I really have for today's lesson. I hope that those examples were helpful to you guys. If it was, please give the video a thumbs up and that way I know and I can continue to make these videos for you. If you are a parent out there or a student, be sure to subscribe. That way you'll know as soon as I upload the latest video that I've created for you guys. Other than that, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye everybody.